Right now, I'm going to show you how to create photorealistic textures and shapes inside of Photoshop using lighting effects. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And here it is. This is the third installment of our lighting effects video. And this is a moment a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm going to show you how to really open up these texture channels. So there was two parts before this. If you haven't seen them, check them out. The first one where I showed how to create a uh, gel colored lighting effect. I also showed how to relight a barrel while adding some textures using the existing channels inside the photo. The second part I showed how to light a portrait. And we kind of touched on a custom texture channel, but we really didn't do much. This is where I unveil what we can do in this custom uh, texture channel where we can create incredibly realistic looking textures and shapes. We're going to do all of that right now. And these are the techniques that I used a number of years ago where I got some recognition doing photorealistic illustrations. I created the camera and I created the guitar. And these won me a couple of Guru Awards at Photoshop World first place in illustration and also a place inside of New Masters of Photoshop 1 and Volume 2. Um, these books, which ended up going into the uh, Bookshelf Hall of Fame and, you know, all that good stuff. It was a great time back then. I was obviously younger and better looking. Too bad I didn't have social media then. But let's have a look at those techniques right now. I'm going to unveil them to you. So we're going to start off with a simple example just to show you how powerful this really is. So what I've got here is I've just got this is going to essentially just be a flattened document, but let's have a look. What did I do? I just got a, a background here, put a little gradient in the bottom because I added some icons and I just wanted those to show up. I could have made them black against white, but you'll see how this gradient just kind of looks kind of cool. And then, of course, my logo, Photoshop Cafe logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge all of these together. Click one layer, holding the shift key, click at the top and all the layers in between are selected. Now we want to merge all of these into one layer without flattening it. The way to do that is to hold down all the modifier keys and hit the E key. So on Mac, that's Shift Option Command E. On Windows, it's Shift Control Alt E. And then we get the flattened layer on top. That's great. So we just want to copy the, all of this into the clipboard. So Control A will copy everything. Control C will copy. And that, of course, on Mac is Command A for all, Command C for copy. All right, so let's go into the channels and you'll see the channels here. If we go up under Windows, if you don't see them, you'll see the channels there, but usually they're nested right there with the layers. So they should look like that. And what I want to do is create a new alpha channel. So we're going to go down to the very bottom and just click here to create a new channel and you'll see it's called Alpha 1. Notice our selection is still active. It doesn't really matter if it is or isn't because for what we want to do, we just want to paste what we have in the clipboard in there. So Control V and let me just Control D to turn off the selection. Okay, so here we go. We've created an alpha channel. And if you look at it, it's just in black and white. Each channel only supports one color. So you can't actually see an alpha channel in color. And what it does is it basically is a place to store selections. And essentially that's what this is. This channel is just kind of like a layer mask in a lot of ways. And essentially what it is doing is just showing what's selected and what's not. So something white is fully selected. Something black is fully unselected and something gray is partially selected. This is important. So we use this for depth when we're working in these texture channels. This is the key to the texture channels. When you see something that is black or white, white is all the way forward, black is all the way back, and different shades. Imagine a gradient going from white to black. This is where it's going to place it in space as we project it as a almost like a 3D model. This is not 3D, but it definitely is going to look 3D. All right. So what we want to do now is we just want this channel. We don't want to use it. We just want to just basically have it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up the top here and we're going to click on the words RGB. Notice that this alpha channel should be off and these three channels should now be selected. This is its normal state. If you see something like this, that means the alpha channel is still on. Just turn the eyeball off next to that. And then we're going to go back to our layers. And why don't we just create a brand new layer and we're just going to fill it with gray. 
So why don't we just create a brand new layer and I want to fill this layer with gray. So I'm just going to hit the shift delete key and that'd be shift backspace on windows to bring up our fill and then just choose 50% gray, click OK. So now we've got a 50% gray layer. This is the layer we're working on. Okay, so let's go under filter, render. And we're going to go down to lighting effects. Now, if you don't see this, make sure that you are under image mode. Make sure you're in RGB mode and you're in 8 bits per channel. Otherwise, this will not work. Okay, so let's go under filter, render. And we're going to go down to lighting effects. And this is the default lighting effects. This is what you see. You don't see anything at the moment. Now, if you don't see this area here that we work with, try hitting the control H and it would be command H on Mac. And that hides or shows our overlays. So if you don't see that overlay, control H will make it visible. All right. So right now we're just in the default. It's not really doing anything yet. So why don't we choose a particular lighting? In fact, why don't we go under here? And if you're not in default, this is our presets, by the way, just go in here and just choose the default and we'll just work from there for now. All right, let's make the magic happen. Where it says texture, click on there and you'll see alpha one. That is the channel that we created. Now, if we click on it and select it, nothing is happening yet. But watch this as we change the height. Look at that. Now our text is starting to appear. Now this is not a very exciting light. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So I'm just clicking on the side to drag it out. There we go. And we can reposition it. And let's turn the intensity up so we can see it a little bit better. Look at that. Maybe add a little color, click on color here. So that's in blue. And boom, there we go. We're starting to have an effect now. Let me make that just a little bit brighter. Okay, so if you look at it here, notice how this protrudes out. That's because white is going forward. Now, if you want to go the other way, go into a negative height and see how now it gets embossed into it or stamped into it. Now, this light is not necessarily always the best. If you want to create some kind of a cool spotlight effect like this, it works great. But sometimes a better light to be using, if we look here, there's the lights. Sometimes we just want to use something like a, um, a point light can work really well for these. So let's just go under here, turn off that spotlight. Now we're just working with that point light. And if you look at it there, that actually shows it off a little bit better. And why don't we change the color here? Give it that little bit of that blue. And notice how we can see how nice that looks. And of course we can make it deeper and notice as we're going deeper, see how this texture really comes out here. And of course, if we want to go the other way and have it protrude, we can do that. And of course, with this particular light, you can move it around and notice as we move it around, we can choose which direction we want the lighting from. One thing you might do is go in here into the ambience and just kind of play around with that to just kind of brighten up the rest of the image a little bit, or we could increase the exposure here. And you can see essentially how we do that. All right, let's take this further. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to also fill this one with gray. So that's shift delete, fill it with 50% gray and let's do it again. But this time I'm going to change something. Let's go under our channel. Let's turn on our shape. What I want to do, instead of have a sharp edge on there, I want to have more of a bevel on the edge going into the logo. And the way you can do that is just by simply blurring because if you blur it, that's going to create that gradient and that gradient is going to change the height and round it off. Watch what I mean. We're really getting into some good stuff right now. So I'm going to make a selection around here. And I don't want to blur the Photoshop Cafe logo, so I'm going to hold the Alt or the Option key and I'm just going to go in here so that we're not selecting that. So what we're doing is selecting the area inside the marching ants. And I just want to give this a little bit of a blur. So let's choose filter blur. Give this a Gaussian blur. And notice how that edge now is blurring 
And in fact, I might even go more just to kind of show you guys how this really works. Click OK. And what I want to do is just make sure I can't see an edge there. If I see an edge, it's starting to see a little bit of an edge, which means maybe I've gone a little too far. But I think we can get away with it and you'll see what I want to show you. All right, so let's go back to RGB again. Make sure our channel's here, but not visible. Back to our layer and let's apply lighting effects again. Filter, render. And we're going to grab our lighting effects. Now watch this. Look at that. See how now we get this emboss and it's probably too far right now. Let me bring it back and see how now we get the softer edge because we blurred that. All right. We've got two more things I'm going to show you here. I'm going to show you how to create a re super realistic rock texture from scratch. And then we're going to go into my guitar image and I'm going to show you how I made the body. So this is going to get pretty advanced. I hope you guys like this. It's maybe going to go a little more advanced than some of the tutorials we're used to. If you guys are liking this, hit the like button. And also if you're new, hit the subscribe button right now. All right, let's go. Let's continue. So I could click OK to apply that. Great. OK, let's go further. Let's create a new layer. OK, so why don't we just fill this one with gray? So we're creating another layer with gray. Great. Now let's go into the channel. This time we're going to make our own channel. So let's hit the plus button here and we're going to start with alpha 2. And why don't we call it clouds? Just so I can show you how the naming works. And what we're going to do now is we're going to apply a filter directly to here. And this is the foundation of most realistic textures is using the clouds. So with foreground background, just hit the D key, reset to black and white, go into filter, go to render, and then under render, choose clouds. That's it. We're just going to leave it there. Click back on RGB. Notice the channels are there, but not selected. Back to our layer. Here's our gray layer. Let's apply it. Filter, render, lighting effects. All right, get ready for this to change. So what I'm going to do now with the same lighting setup as we used before, let's change this alpha channel from alpha one to clouds because that's what we named it. Could have been called alpha two if we hadn't changed it. Here we go. Click and boom. Look at this. We start to get this very realistic rock like we're inside a cave. All right, make sure our point light is selected here. Let me move that to somewhere in the middle. And we're gonna give it a better color. Let's click on the blue here and let's change it to brown. Now you won't see brown here, but you'll find it under the orange. If you go down under the orange and start to come down this way a little bit, this is where our brownish textures or colors will be. I'm gonna say about there is gonna give us a nice rock effect. Let's turn our ambience down a little bit because I want this to punch a little bit more. So let's bring that down and then we're going to bring up our exposure here. And let's play around with our gloss. See how we can make it just really changes. It makes it a little bit more of a shinier rock here versus going there. Makes it a little flatter, but I like the texture there. And let's do the same thing with the metallic. Let's turn metallic all the way down. All right, and you can see this is what's happening here. Now, if I was to change this light to a spotlight, we can get a pretty neat effect too. So let's go back here. We're going to the spotlight this time. And let's just kind of play around with that. Maybe stretch it out a little bit. And you can see what we're starting to get there. We start to get some pretty cool effects. Click OK to apply it. And there we go. Now we're creating this realistic rock effect. So there's all kinds of things you can do by applying filters to these channels and then running it through the lighting effects. You're going to be able to create all manner of textures. So I really want to show you how I created the body on the guitar. There's a lot of really interesting steps in how I build that up. And I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this video so it's not too long. And I've got the second part, I'm going to post it tomorrow. So you don't have to wait long, just come in tomorrow. And for most of you, it'll already be there on the channel. And then we're going to go in here and I'm going to show you how I create the actual contours and depth of this body on this guitar using the very techniques that we've been learning on this tutorial and the other parts. Remember, this is part three. 
and we've been building upon it. Part four, we're really going to go down the rabbit hole tomorrow. So tune in and check it out. And by the way, guys, let me know if this is helping you. Let me know in the comments underneath what you think of these techniques. And also, if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, subscribe right now so you don't miss a video. And also turn on those notifications so you know when I upload my new video, uh, YouTube will let you know. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until tomorrow, I'll see you at the cafe.